Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be revisiting my iPhone 12s with an update to the original video. Apple has just released iOS 14.4, which apparently adds an all new notification for if the phone cannot verify a new genuine camera. However, I'm interested to see if they fix the issues which arose after the camera had been replaced. In the last video, I took apart two brand new iPhone 12s, swapped the logic boards between the two, this resulted in a series of warning messages that the parts were not genuine, the camera stopped working properly with random freezing occurring when using the 0.5x zoom, the portrait mode didn't function at all, and the panorama mode refused to work with the 0.5x zoom. Along with that, Face ID stopped working, the battery health was disabled, and True Tone had completely disappeared. It was determined that third parties likely would not be able to repair these phones even if they used genuine parts, as each part was paired to each device. Reports surfaced that iOS 14.4 beta would introduce a new camera not genuine message. As I still owned my two iPhone 12s, I wanted to test this out and see if the camera glitches had been resolved. So shortly after updating to iOS 14.4 beta 2, I could then swap across our cameras again and see if we get any issues. Updating was relatively easy and just used a beta profile and you can see that this is now running iOS 14.4 beta. I'll then disconnect and remove both cameras from each of my iPhone 12s. For a full teardown and repair assessment on these phones, I'd recommend checking out the original video which goes much more into depth than this update video. Removing the cameras from both iPhone 12s, I will swap them to the opposite phone which will make them not original to the phone, but a genuine Apple part. I'll reassemble the phone just enough so we can test it out and see if we get any issues or warnings in iOS 14.4. After reconnecting our front display and battery, I could test out the phone. Booting up, I saw no immediate signs of any notifications or warnings. In the camera app, everything works as expected, with all modes and functions working like the panorama and portrait mode. A few days later, the release of iOS 14.4 came out, so I wanted to update the phone. iTunes for Windows couldn't connect to the phone, and on Mac OS, I also couldn't connect as it required iTunes 12.10.10, which was only released for Windows, with the latest version of iTunes for Mac being iTunes 12.8. So I had to use three U tools, a third-party software, to update the phone. After a few minutes, everything was successful and the release version of iOS 14.4 was installed. I set up the device and immediately it was greeted in settings with an important camera message warning. So it appears that it was introduced in the main release version, but not on the beta release of this same iOS version. Clicking learn more will take you to a page about this message in summary, it tells you you need to use genuine Apple parts and that improper repair could cause damage to the battery, overheating or result in injury and that this message only appears on the iPhone 12 models as well as where you can get service by taking it to Apple. However, this doesn't affect the use of the camera like we saw in previous iOS versions. I'm happy to see they fixed the issues with the camera. I honestly believe it only happened as a result of the massive coverage from my iPhone 12 teardown video. And that got me thinking, I wonder if anything else has changed. Maybe True Tone won't disappear after a display replacement, or maybe the battery health now won't be disabled. So I'm gonna have to rerun all of the tests I completed in the original video by swapping the logic boards between the two phones. I don't expect Face ID to still work as Apple has never allowed it to be replaced in the past. Just like Touch ID, they're the only ones who can program it. Upon boot, we are greeted with the expected Face ID cannot be activated and non-genuine display, battery and camera messages. I found that all of these notifications being activated at once kept causing the phone to freeze whenever the unable to activate Face ID alert box appeared. After unlocking the phone a few times, I was able to eventually dismiss the message and the touch worked perfectly fine again. Under the battery setting, I'm disappointed to see that it still says service and the battery health has been deliberately disabled. In iOS 11, even non-genuine batteries work perfectly fine with this battery health feature. 
True Tone is still being disabled for a replacement display and to no surprise, Face ID isn't working. So besides the change with the cameras, everything else appears to be the same as last time. All the features of the camera are still enabled. You can up the resolution and change various settings as you like. I did try this without the camera connected and obviously the camera didn't work, but I received no non-genuine message. So it only does that if the camera is actually installed in the phone. The last thing I'll need to do with both of these phones is reinstall the display. I'll need to install a new water and dust resistant seal, which I didn't do last time as this phone was so new, there wasn't one available. I did purchase a whole pack of 10 so I can install some on these two phones. Using a pair of tweezers, I was able to wind up all of the adhesive in one go. I did this for both phones and was quite an effective method of being able to remove the adhesive. Although it came out in one go, it was a time consuming process and was quite draining on my fingers as of the constant rotation needed on the pair of tweezers. Once it had all been removed though, I could get our new water and dust resistant seal installed on both housings before we attach our displays. I can use a spudger to correctly seat it in. Removing the protective film, I can then attach our display panel, connecting up the display, digitizer and earpiece cables. I can then reconnect the battery and the two cowlings going over the connections. Using a microfiber cloth, I can clean up any of the dust that I've left inside the phone, remove the protective film on the adhesive itself and press our display panel down into position. I'll need to repeat the same process on the second phone. One indispensable tool when working on iPhones is an eye hold, which is used to hold the display in place while you connect the cables and screw everything back into position. Lastly, using a microfiber cloth, I can wipe down all of the fingerprints that I've left inside or any of the dust. Then I can remove all the protective film covering up our adhesive and finally seal everything back down into position for the very last time. I'll need to install the two pentalobe screws on both iPhone 12s and we're done. So this is it. The iPhone 12 has become slightly more repairable, but still proves challenging thanks to its many software locks on replacement parts. The phone still has no way of telling genuine from aftermarket parts. So whether you're using two brand new phones like me or some cheap part, you'll receive the same messages and issues. Only Apple has the correct tools to pair the phone to accept the new part. There may be third party tools in the future that work with the iPhone 12 to remove these messages, but you still shouldn't need them in the first place. Like we've seen today, who knows what a software update might change in the future. It could get better, it could get worse. Having put everything back into its original state, I can now sell these phones, or at least try. For some reason, I'm only allowed to list one a week thanks to a restriction on eBay. I never faced this issue when listing my two Galaxy S20s. I don't know who set this restriction, but it's ridiculous. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any tips or what tools I use to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.